Hello everyone, I have now started up my own events company where I'll be bringing guests from all over the world for a live interview, meet and greet and questions from the audience. My first guest will be undefeated boxer Joe Kozagi. Tickets are on sale now for the event in Glasgow on the 29th of January 2022. You can click the link in the description or go on to Eventbrite Type in Jokel's Aggie Glasgow and purchase your tickets there. I will hopefully see you all soon for what's going to be an amazing night. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Yeah, we were told that like we made Jackass look like the Teletubbies, so... You know, I love Jackass, you know, but uh, Sanchez, yeah, at times it went completely off the scale. A researcher from MTV contacted Pritch, and I remember Pritch ringing me up, and I was on this Motorola mobile phone, like that, right? I was skating down the road, like that. And he's like, oh, they want to do a show on MTV. I'm like, fuck off, man, fuck off, you're wasting my battery, you know, like I think. <laughs> like a dumb jolly type yeah. moment. Like myself and Pritch had been awake all night in Vegas. The cactus went into the back of Pritch's head. He flung it out. You always flung it. He had me right there, yeah? And, yeah, I flipped out. And I did, yeah. I smacked him. Went down there, I was very ill-prepared for... You know, I just thought, yeah, well, you know, you just jump off a 10-metre diving board, touch the ground, push off. I'm a fairly confident swimmer. But the thing is, I went off the board and I didn't touch the flaming ground. My like tippy toes got in, like oh. So I'm like, ah. so I don't reach the surface, and therefore I'm like, right, just stay, just stay calm, Mike. Just stay calm. You get to the top. You know. But um, yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. So <laughs> yeah, one lifeguard came in, two lifeguards came in. Yeah, I think it was four in total. Yeah, and too much time is spent underwater. You know, people think tour bus life, you know, is great and whatnot. But you try living, sleeping, eating, you know, you, you're only getting like, you know, two showers a week, you know, unless you go to some dodgy service station in fucking Germany or whatever. Yeah, with somebody looking through the wall having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of service station oh, that is. Right, well, you be, you, you be to them. Like, <laughs> It's only service oh, stations oh, I, I go to. I, I, I like gl glory old James, yeah. you know? Why do you think I'm on the road so much? <laughs> oh, dude. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got another dirty Sanche legend. Pancho, how are we? Is it Mike Pancho Locky? You've what is your name? Mike Pancho Lock. Is it Lock? Yeah, it's a silent D. Yeah, yeah. is it a Scottish with the call Locky? I'll be I, I, do you know what? I I I have been called worse. <laughs> I've been called far worse. How have you been, my brother? I've been very well indeed. Very well, very well. No, it's good to see you, man. You too, my friend. Good to you see too. You. All right. Thanks for having us on. No, a legend in the game, like I say. Absolute nutcases back in the day. I've had the main man, Matthew Pritchard on. Now I've got yourself. It's um, it's a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. And like you know, it, like Pritch is a bit of a hard task masker as well. <laughs> Needs to try and live up to. Do you know what I mean? You know, Forrest Gump himself. <laughs> yeah, he's doing well with all the fitness stuff. Yeah, huh? yeah he's a great man. Do you know what? It's like the utmost respect. Mm -hmm. Dirty Sanchez, mate. Absolute legends for what he's done, what he's achieved, not just in Wales but all around the UK, even worldwide. You know, he's went everywhere with it. He's um, kind of set to set the benchmark for the mad shit, which is, uh, I love that stuff. Like, I'm very dark humoured and for what you've done, you kind of took it to another level from um, Jackass. But you can, like I say, you were adored, loved and it's good to have you on. It's great to be on and um, yeah. Yeah, we were told that like, we made Jackass look like the Teletubbies. So, you know, I love Jackass, you know, but uh, Sanchez... Yeah, at times it went completely off the scale. <laughs> I always go back to where to start with my guest, brother. Where you grew up and how it all began. Brought up in Batalbet, the eldest brother of three. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, um, yeah, just an average upbringing, you know, like working class, yeah. What was your school and stuff like? My school, yeah, yeah my school was all good, man. It, like, believe it or not, like, it wasn't until Sanchez that I ever got bullied, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, you know, like, football and stuff, took football to a level, and then, yeah, skateboarding and stuff kicked in, and... Yeah, I had to make a conscious decision whether to pursue skateboarding as opposed to, like, football, which was, you know, it was really going off and stuff. But I was having more fun, you know, playing football and whatnot than I flies in my head now. <laughs> yeah, I was having more fun, you know, uh, skateboarding. So, um, yeah, I had a chat with the old man and he said, Mike, do what you love. And next thing you know, I'm traveling around Europe with, you know, Pritch, uh, two Brummies and a guy from my stake yeah, when I was 15. Like on one of those yearly passport things. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, a young age, but how was that experience for you going through that? To it, was, it was great. It was before I did like the old Benadon with the boys type mm -hmm. thing, you know. And um, yeah, it really broadened my horizons. And you know, I was quite fortunate as a child to to travel and stuff, you know, with the folks and whatnot. But um, when you go solo, you know, but don't get me wrong, I had to earn, you know, that right. You know, there was two paper rounds. And when I went to my dad, I said, look, dad, you know, I've, you know, I've got 90 quid, yeah? And he was like, well, look, I'll give you a 50 on top, I got, and I went away for 10 days around Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's still a young age to then be thinking about doing that stuff, to be trying to spread your wings and make something yeah, of your life. Yeah, no, but it was, it, was, it was all about just exploring skateboarding. You know, Matthew, uh, well... Matthew and Dink, you know, especially Matthew, like he set the bar so high with skateboarding. At that moment in time, he was probably, well, if it, like without doubt, one of the best in Europe, if not the best. Is that how good he was, yeah? Yeah, yeah, he's really, you know, with Matthew, you know, he takes everything to the extreme, you know. Like I know you, you went into that subject, you know, on mm -hmm. the podcast, but he genuinely, yeah. Yeah, that crazy mentality. Yeah, yeah, it's like all or nothing, you know. He really goes for it. And, yeah, that was the same skateboarding, yeah. so... How was your family upbringing? Mum, dad, brothers, how was that life? Yeah, it was It was all good, yeah. It was, just, yeah, all good. Dad's, you know, like, worked in the steel... Uh, well, he worked in Metal Box. We emigrated to South Africa when I was, like, three. So I lived there till I was three, till five. Yeah, two younger brothers. My middle brother's a lawyer. Yeah. And my youngest brother is a Sparky in the Steelworks, which I'm sure you passed on the way down. I did pass that. I was like, what the fuck is that? I thought something was on fire. <laughs> it's just an <laughs> crazy <laughs> metropolis. It was either that or else you were smoking up a big blunt. I was, I, yeah, I, was, I was just coming round the bend. I was like, something's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, Smoke signals. Yeah, in it, yeah. Well, that might have something to do with my growth. Like, <laughs> 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 All that self uh, maybe. What's it? Uh, is your brothers and that, what are they all like, fitness-wise? And Simon's, um, my middle brother, Simon, you know, he's a um, good rugby player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 he did, he did really well. Chris, yeah, you know, he dabbled in sports and stuff, but, you know, he just settled down, two, two children, he's happy. Simon, he's got three boys under the age of five. And he... Shagger? <laughs> oh, it's someone in the lock gene, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but, um, yeah, Simon's flat out. Yeah, yeah, he's done it. He's had a few, um, like, half marathons and stuff, you know, in good time. Yeah. But, like, he's had an injury recently, so... so yeah. Quite an athletic family as well. So, how did you... Were you a baller at the football? Were you a winger? No, I was uh, I was I, I was in the boiler room, man. Well, like, you're the centre mid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulling yeah, yeah, yeah. the strings, yeah, like orchestrating, like uh -huh. yeah, like Jan Mulby was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Iesta. <laughs> no, that centre of gravity, mm -hmm. but I, like I was surrounded by good football players. Do you know what I mean? Like Fuzzy and stuff. They were tall guys, you know. And so like like they knew when to go, and like we used to feed off each other, and mm -hmm. yeah. It was a great unit, man. How did you go on in the centre mid, though? Did people try and bully their way? With yeah, they tried way, to, but yeah. like when Hammerhead comes into play, you know what I mean? It's like this Caranium, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I like, yeah, to try and orchestrate it, you know? What did you do for work? What? Yeah. When, when, when I left school, I did an apprenticeship with Sony's. 
Did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, in pretend um, mechanical engineering. Yeah, got to the third year and they wanted to change it to Mechalac. And yeah, I basically discovered Escape, which is a nightclub, a notorious nightclub in Swansea. So my focus wasn't so much on the college, it was more on partying and yeah, I didn't actually complete that course. So nah, just did you go off the rails at an early age? Yeah, you could say, yeah. What do you think kicked that off? Just young, daft? Just young, naive, and very, very stupid, yeah. yeah I was the same, man, just fucking ripped you know, the ass out. I'm still the same, but obviously... Yeah, yeah well, I, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I think we come from, like, like a similar kind of background, yeah. you know? It's, um, you know, it's, you know, like, it's a learning curve, and it? Life <laughs> is a learning curve. Every day. You know, but good. I'm like a boomerang. Like, I'm like, come on now, this time, like, you must learn this time. Yeah. Uh, maybe. It's yeah. difficult. Change isn't easy, but it can be done. That's the beautiful thing about it. Like, yes. we're all fuck about, we just don't know what's going on in life. Like, we just don't know, honestly. It's like, just one big game in my eyes. Have you ever stuck to a, a proper job? Did you ever have anything? Yes, like- indeed I did. Like, basically, I was still living with my folks at the time. So I got back home and I was like, right, you know, the apprenticeship's gone. The old man went, he said, you got a week to get a job, otherwise you're out the house. So I stuck a shitty factory job out for three months, which was really hard work. But then, in the meantime, I managed to get a job as a quality engineer working for a Japanese firm. And that, in itself, yeah, that was that was good money then. You know, it would be good money now also, yeah. How hard is it to get out of like, Wales? It's quite small populations, quite small areas. Like, do you feel it's quite condensed? Like, there's not uh, much happening? Yeah, well, like, like you know, in, in the meantime, you know, like, well, further on, you know, like I moved to Bristol and stuff. Doing what? But that, but that was that was actually working with autistic uh, children. Oh, that's good, man. Taking them to extreme classrooms and stuff. Yeah. Uh, How was and that? I'm, it's probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, apart from bringing up my own kids. Yeah, how many kids you got? Uh, two. How old? Two daughters. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a daughter. Uh, She's loving me. Yeah, hell. yeah, they grow up too fast. <sighs> too fast, and I like, hitting that age, 11, 12, 13. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. Well, it makes yeah. you see the world differently. Listen, I treated women like shit. Like, I was a, a player back in the day, but then you get a daughter, you kind of your whole outlook changes. Well, yeah, because you you know what guys you know, are like. What guys are like, yeah, it? bastards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's testing times, but um, yeah, they're good kids. That's yeah, the main thing. Yeah, and he's uh, yeah, she walked away with twelve GCSEs. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, good on Which her. is a lot more than what I did. She must get her brains from her mum then. Or maybe the postman. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, when did, so how the fuck did you end up in Dirty Sanchez then? What, 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 how did that start, that, that, that mad journey? That mad journey began when I was maybe 13, like myself and a good mate, Jan Purchase. We used to skate locally and stuff. And we were looking in magazines and we could see, like, oh, Pritchard, Cardiff, like, you know, all of that. So one day we went up to Cardiff. Like, oh, but as we turned right and walked up the hill, Pritch and all the crew were all there. Like, oh, and we just, like, got a little bit starstruck. I'm not going to lie, man. Pritch is still a dickhead, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were skating up at uh, the top of the railway station and, um, yeah, we just hit it off, man. Like, you know, it was one of those things and they showed us all the spots. It was like, oh, we'll, like, we'll meet up, you know, this time next weekend. And then, like, Pritch had a pager then. So it was like, oh, all right, page me, like, if you want to skate, you know, or whatever. And, yeah, things just manifested from there and, you know, Skateboarding basically took over my life. How good were you? I, I was all right, man. Yeah, yeah. Made, yeah, made the magazines, and yeah. but more importantly, I had a lot of fun, and I loved pushing myself. You know, is that you know, you... like you know, the body is you know, oh. it doesn't heal too good. What's that with? That's from skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, just landing on your elbow, popping your shoulder, and stuff. What kind of injuries? Other injuries have you had? Um, touch wood. Apart from that, 
not um, like ankles, broken fingers, broken toes, uh, dislocated knee, but like, you know, nothing as severe as that. Yeah, that's fucking dodgy, that. Yeah, it's that? A, there's a dodgy fucking, <laughs> it's a dodgy yeah, surgeon yeah. on this. Like, <laughs> Did Pritchard do that? <laughs> <laughs> I do question myself at times. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, like you said, touch wood, that was the worst one. But, um, yeah, the worst thing was, there was a, like a nurse on, and I went to a school that had a, like a sixth form, and she was on like work placement. I'm off my head on morphine, and I needed like a bedpan thing. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like basically trapped to this morphine thing. And she came along, yeah, and had to yeah, put in the bedpan. <laughs> yeah. And then I did like like I was I, I think I was like the, the the second year of school and she was just leaving. It was just mm-hmm. yeah, it was quite, quite awkward. <laughs> 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 but the night side is funny. Yeah. Right now. How did then? So what, how was the whole outlook when you started forming your little gang and then getting the call to then make programs? Were you recording stuff before? Yeah, yeah, but like of course, you know, like there was there was people like Danny who. Um, was documenting PMX in and stuff, and he's an absolute legend. Dikey also, you know, he, you know, he, he was more chilled on the skate, and he was doing a media degree, and then you know, Dayton would always have the camera on. So initially, you know, it started off just being like South Wales skateboarding scenes, you know, like a scene video, just showcasing what like what we got in South Wales, and then. Things just brewed up, and then we discovered alcohol, and yeah, and then there was like Pritchard versus Dayton, which is based off a Yankee thing, Rodney versus Day One, and yeah, myself and Dan got involved, and yeah, like Dan just, well, Dan is Dan. The rest is history. Yeah, and yeah, it just manifested, and. Yeah, FHM, I believe, got a hold of a copy of Pritchard vs. Dayton because I was sh- like sold in all the skate sh- uh, shops in the UK. And then a researcher from MTV contacted Pritch. And I remember Pritch ringing me up, and I was on this Motorola mobile phone, like, all right? I was skating down the road, like, uh, and he's like, oh, they want to do a show on MTV. I'm like, fuck off, man. Fuck off. You're wasting my battery. Like, I think. <laughs> like a dumb jolly type yeah. moment. Like that. And then, yeah, he just pursued and pursued. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then the train tickets came through the door to go to Camden. And, yeah. What age were you? I was 22. And then that's when the madness began. How were you accepted doing the skateboarding stuff? Because I know Pritchard says it wasn't as big then. So it was kind of like outcast. Yeah, for, for me, right? And this this is an honest God's uh, story. Because we were like skateboarding. It was like seen as a, a rebellious, you know, uncool thing. You know, now it's in the Olympics and you've got all the corporates and stuff behind it. But at that moment in time, it was like... There was people in my school like that, right? And especially after, I, like I said, you know, the football stuff, because I was going to commit to skateboarding, you know, one or two of them would try and have a go, but they knew that I was fucking better than me in football. But they didn't, like, they tried to have a pop like that. And fast forward, you know, you know, 20 odd years, I was in a pub in Batalbot, and one of them came up to me and he was like, hey, Lockie. How do you get our show on MTV, and but? And I was just like, do you remember that piece of wood with eight do- with eight holes and four wheels? That's what got us the fucking show. Let me buy you a pint. Fuck off. Jog on. Yeah. Do you know what? If you, like, if you can't accept someone for who they are. And do you know what? Like, to be fair, like, are my friends, you know, and people around me, but, you know, I, I like, I, I'm from a small town, you know, it's very much different to Pritch, you know? Yeah, but you know there was like the odd thinking knobhead. You're going to get that no matter what you do. Yeah, in of life. course you do in life. You know, like you know, there's good and bad in everyone. You yeah. know, but it was just one of those moments. I was just like, look, remember that skateboard? Yeah, that's what got me into fucking MTV. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to know then. Now fuck off. Yeah, jog on. But it was you your know? first video you done for Jack? Eh, uh, for Jackass? Fuck's it, I'm not promoting those bastards <laughs> for Dirty Sanchez. 
Um, Can you remember? Yeah, the first, well, the first stuff that got us the pilot was, um, yeah, it was Pritchard versus Deaton. Uh, yeah. yeah. What was, what was going through your mind doing it, or were you thinking just a bit of fun? Did you realise how big it was going to get? I don't know, I was probably half asleep most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, like, there was there was no pre-planning. There was, like, everything that happened was, was completely organic. Yeah, it wasn't contrived. You know, when we went to MTV, they wanted to call it Pop Idol, uh, Shock Idol, sorry. Yeah. And we're like, nah, 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 nah. And yeah, you know, the name came about. And in hindsight, yeah, we should have like retained the name because the bastards owe us a lot of money. What does, what is Dirty Sanchez, who picked the name and where does it come from? I don't even think I asked Pritchard that. You'll have to Google what Dirty Sanchez means. Yeah. Uh, Joycey came up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even, I'm surprised I didn't It's a sexual manoeuvre. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> you know, you just throw a fucking... And there's no happy ending with it, you know? <laughs> well, no, well, not for the lead, you know? I, I don't know, it depends, it depends on where you mm. rock, you know? But I, mm. yeah, yeah, he wouldn't be happy for the lead, yeah. How, how but, what? <laughs> yeah, we like, uh, yeah, we need, yeah, we need, yeah. Google it, James. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had to when I was 22. I remember going to the fucking, well, like Holiday Inn or wherever we were at. And there was a dial up internet. And I had to Google it. And then mm. just went back to the elephant's head in Camden. Thinking, oh, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, of course I know what it is. I got the moment in time. I didn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I don't even... I, will, I definitely need to Google it fucking now. <laughs> well, how was it then? A young kid, young skateboarder from Wales to then getting put into the limelight, MTV, massive name. Everybody's wanting a piece of you. How does that affect you? <sighs> to be honest, like, you know, being with the likes of, like, Matthew Dayton... Yeah, especially Pritch, you know, it was, there was always like limelight and stuff. And, you know, Dane set up a company that I eventually turned like pro and stuff on called Kill City. And um, so we'd like, we were getting people like coming up to us in the skate world, but it's nothing like prepare you for like walking down the street and just people coming on to you. And it's, yeah, it was yeah, it was it was pretty intense. Yeah, it was you know, yeah, going out the ordinary, should we say? Did but um, can that become tiresome? Well, at the end of the day, you know, if people if people are willing to watch a show, then you know, you got to respect them. You put yourself in that position. You have to rock with it. You have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it like so. Yeah, it just you know it was. Like the Tampax actors say, take everything in your stride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it was, um, yeah, it was definitely a shock to the system, and but in a good way. Yeah, obviously you meet no beds out there who want to try and, you know, if you're in the pub and whatever, you know, it's to try and out comp you. But you know, thankfully, you know, they, they were few and far between. Is that the difficult thing though? Because obviously your character. Like you were a, a little bastard when you were drunk and that. Like you caused a lot of shit, even though like when you fell asleep and stuff, you got the hair and that shit, but you caused a lot of shit. Did, did, is that hard to them people thinking you're that character 24-7 when people expect to see you, what you're on the TV to what you see in the yeah, pub? Yeah, exactly. You know, like I've, I've had I've had football, like professional football players who I'm not going to mention, come up with like 50 Sambukas and say like, down them all, down them all, down them all. I will give you 5G, and I'm like, look, man, I'm an actual human being, like, do you know what I mean? You know, like, don't get me wrong, I like, or I used to like to get very inebriated, but that's not the real me. The real me is, kind of like, quite a secluded person, I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm a, like a mellow, like, character. You know, don't get me wrong, if someone takes your eyebrows off, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever tried going to the bank yeah, manager with yeah, your yeah, eyebrows off? Yeah. I feel like that. <laughs> so you feel like, you feel like, you feel like um, uh, an Eastern European orphan, you know, like, yeah, um, yeah, like the industry, it's not so good in that, you know. Like, it's, it, you know it's, it's not good, man. So therefore, there is going to be a reaction. But I am a very placid person, you know. It's like at those moments in times, if you get fucked with, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, because Pritch was saying, you know, just give him 20 minutes, 
and then he's in La La Land. You know, but it, it got to the point, like, all right, we got purposely kicked off a tour bus with the pepper spray and stuff, yeah, which almost, like, the bus driver, he was like, oh, he said, I've been on tour with Anthrax, all these death metal, I, I don't even know the half the name to him. He said, I've never experienced anything like you guys. And he was like, ah, get off my fucking bus. We were like, ah, yes. <laughs> so we like, we end up in Rome, like, ah, check into a hotel. I'm like, yes, my own room. Like, ah. Went to bed. The boys only just went like that, right. Oh, Mike Glock, room 902 or whatever. You know, I can't, I can't remember the specifics. So even when, I, like, I was trying to, like, chill out, do you know what I mean? It was just nonstop. So therefore, therefore, there is going to be a reaction, and just like with, you know, with the, with the cacti, like myself and Pritch had been awake all night in Vegas. The cactus went into the back of Pritch's head. He flung it out. <laughs> you always flung it. He had me right there, yeah? and yeah, I flipped out. And I did, yeah. I smacked him. That could have took your eye out, though. It could, yeah, exactly. An, an inch, Pritchard, you bastard. Pritch, you're a fucking wanker. <laughs> Is, um, I, I, I remember that when you stuck it on his head. And then he threw it, that's right, I remember uh, yeah, that. Yeah, but it wasn't me you actually yeah, put it on Yeah, I remember his head. that. Yeah. That, dude, that could have fucking took your eye out. Yeah, it was super close. It was like this choya cactus, uh, or cacti. Because you've been close a few times. What was the one... You jumped in the pool with the, the marine gear on and you oh, nearly drowned. Mate. Yeah, I completely underestimated that. <laughs> and we were just like recovering. We were recovering from brands and stuff. And um, yeah, the, like with the schedule with MTV at that moment in time, things got fast tracked and um, like there was no like recovery period or like time to chill with your loved ones and whatnot. So, yeah, instead of being a fortnight off, it got fast track for it. It was just like four days. But then going down there, I was very ill prepared for, you know, I just thought, yeah, well, you, know, you just jump off a 10 meter diving board, touch the ground, push off. I'm a fairly confident swimmer. But the thing is, I went off the board and I didn't touch the flaming ground. My like tippy toes got in. Like, oh. So I'm like, yeah. So I don't reach the surface, and therefore I'm like, right, just stay, just stay calm, Mike. Just stay calm. You get to the top. You know. But um, yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. So, <laughs> yeah, one lifeguard came in, two lifeguards came in. Yeah, I think it was four in total. Yeah, and too much time was spent underwater. Did you nearly die? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say anything like, but it was. It was a real horrid experience. And, like, if people say, you know, it's a good way to die drowning, I beg to differ. No, <laughs> fuck that, man. So what was it that kept you under the water, the boots? No, it was basically not touching the, like, you know, kicking uh -huh. off from the, you know, from the, like, the bottom of the pool, if you like. So you couldn't spring? You so couldn't... I couldn't, like, I didn't get any spring load. Like, so what I should have got is <laughs> gone in with the ultimate bomb. And then, and then, like, yeah, but, um, yeah, I don't think me and the Marines are cut out, to be honest. I was all right to carry in Pritch, you know. But, um, yeah. How many times have you been branded? Just the ones. And what happened? Right, well, basically, it was my 25th birthday. And we were in uh, New Galles, Arizona, with a lot of cowboys and stuff. Um, yeah, so we decided to go over to New Galles, Mexico. And we went over there, and, you know, in, in Latin America, Sanchez is massive, yeah? So, like, we're walking down the street, and people just come out, out to the bars, like, God, yo, Joycey, Dayton, Pancho, you know, and uh, tequila, 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 oh! Yeah, well, I like all the shenanigans, you know, you know the score, yeah. And then we went back over the border, and Jimbo, he was like, "Well, you be branding my cattle all week, so now we got something for you." And he came up with a gleason DS, and like that. Dayton locked himself in the car, <laughs> completely shit it. I was up to you. I was like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Pritch is like, oh, yeah, man, let's do this shit. Like, all right, let's fucking have it. 
like it's having proper hair, and like Matthew being Matthew, you know, like uh, where there's no sense, there's no feeling, like you know, he's he was there, he was in, he was there, right from the from the get go. So like top off, fucking, I was like perched on look, man, and he was just went, and he was like a sizzling pork fucking steak, okay, right, and then he pulled out this other one. So I did a similar thing. It's just like, you know, with injections and stuff. I can't look at them. So like the brand thing, I had to look away and it just went. Tss. And then Joycey, trying to be Joyce, he was like dancing in front, going off on one like that. So he just like had all these pitter-patter little like burns and stuff. But I remember having a phone call off Pritch and he said, how's your brand, man? And I was like, not good. I remember buying these cargo shorts, not these ones, but um, a reputable make, like, and when I was on the plane, I was, it was starting to seep through, you know, the brands, you know, it's probably one of the gnarliest things, that and stingy nettles. that your worst time experience in Dirty Sanchez? Um, well, I, I don't know, the list probably goes on. <laughs> 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 like uh, like the dildos in my hand, yeah, yeah. That was funny. That's fucking uh, funny. Uh, Robocock. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Like, the sailor taping the dildos to your hand and the, the, the fucking, the lock round your neck. The bastards. Yeah, but the thing is, like, my old man's name, God bless him, like, I was, was David Lock. So I was like... I have got a D lock around my neck, like do you know I mean? <laughs> And the first time in Scott and Matthew had it wrong earlier. No, no, they, like no. The first time was in Belfast and Joycey swallowed the key. I did wait for him to shit it out, but then they did it in Scotland, yeah. And with a lot of like rattling, I I barricaded my fucking door in the house. I thought I was safe, like do you know I mean? But the bastards came in through the window, didn't they? So it was like, wherever I went, it was like, no, I couldn't put my head down in like peace at all. But why did you, how can you fall asleep? You, once you sleep, you fucking sleep. Like, I'm, one, one noise, I'm, I'm fucking on guard. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm standing man, up, but you're yeah. out. Yeah, I, I, I think I struggle with like sleep apnea and stuff. Like I just go into a mad, mad sleep. Perfect for shows like Dirty Sanchez, then, huh? Well, I, I suppose, I suppose it definitely like suited the cause of the time. <laughs> but but, yeah, but that, but, you know, that doesn't sum me up as a person. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I did gnarly shit. You know, we all did gnarly shit. You know, it's, you know, there's all sorts of courses, isn't it? You know, it's like, like Joyce, man. He, he his shock value is, you know, tremendous. You know, there's nothing, you know. You think of the grossest thing and kind of like Joyce is like, oh, I'll give it a go. How was the paintballs and stuff though? Did you go through that or was it just Pritchard? Yeah, we all did. In the you first. all went through the first one, did the first Yeah, in the first one, one yeah, uh, yeah. The first series. Like how, that's fucking sore. Yeah, because one night my little fucking wiener, like, oh, I did, it would like skim the ball back, right? And yeah, it was. Yeah, naked paintball, and I would say, yeah, that's probably a bit one of the, the, the like the worst, mm -hmm. the, like definite. Yeah, like you had to do like the walk of shame going through. Yeah. yeah. But when you're talking about it, you're smiling as if you missed the pain as well. But do you know what? I, I do you know what? I like I'm I'm not a fighter or anything by any means. I'm not a tough man. I'm a mellow fucking person, but. Do you know what? There's some there's some pain which is quite nice. Isn't it? Do you know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If that mean. Make, if that makes any sense, you know, like well, of mm -hmm. course it makes sense, you know. Yeah, Pancho's S and M club coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> Going through that the experience though, and becoming the name that he's did, like, is was it a good feeling? How would, did family members and stuff treat you as well? Were they proud? Like. Oh, but I, well, my mother was like, you know, oh, it's like watching a car crash, Michael. You know, mm -hmm. I mean? like you don't want to look, but you will look. And my father, after, right, we're like basically, Pritch turned up with his girlfriend at the time at my parents' house, yeah, because uh, the producer at the time wanted to interview my parents and whatnot, yeah. So. Um, they turned up. Pritch had been awake all night. Yeah, bottle of vodka, 
and a cranberry juice in his hand and my old man's Wrangler jacket but with the sleeves cut off. Yeah, so like that was the first ever introduction my parents had, right? And my old man's, I guess, that guy looks like Freddie Boswell out of bread. <laughs> like that. So like we started laughing and then like like me and Prince were just getting like having a laugh and they were trying to do interviews. So it was like, oh like, you know, let's go let's go over like the the, the local pub and stuff. And Pritchard rock, rocks in, and people had never seen anything like Iron Patrol, but you know, it was just like straight, you know, out of the fucking Brady Bunch, yeah. And uh, yeah, we went back, and like my father had had a few wines at the time, so that we were doing the slapsies thing. So fast forward a week, I and mean, like my dad had a, like a pretty good job in the steelworks at the time. So the morning meeting, and we're like, oh, Dad, we saw you on TV last night. And he went, oh, it's not one of my stupid son's programmes, eh? He went, no, Sir Trevor MacDonald. And we'd got accused of being like, happy slapping. <laughs> and he was like, Mike, every waiver I've signed is going out the fucking window. There's no chance I can ever buy by this. And I was like, oh, we've been stitched up. Like, we've been stitched up. And you know what? Like, I, I was unaware of it at the time as well. But... Uh, yeah, so the old man, he had his own opinion. But, um, yeah, all in all, like, the family's response was good. Yeah. yeah. But, again, it's a, it's a massive thing. It's something that you probably enjoyed. Like, what's the most you miss about it? Well, so, um, well basically, just like anyone else at this moment in time, you know, like, I, I miss, like, travelling and exploring and, you know, meeting new people, you know. Um, yeah, skateboarding. But, you know, like, things are so busy at the moment, you know, like, with, you know, with other stuff. Yeah, you don't get much time to skateboard. But, uh, yeah, the travelling aspect, definitely miss. The camaraderie between the boys, you know? Mm -hmm. It's great, you know, it's great for a while, but then, you know, like, we're like, I like my own bed, I like my own house. You know, I like I like just the basic creature comforts. Yeah. Like to get into a deep sleep without getting your fucking eyebrows whipped off. <laughs> That's exactly right, James. <laughs> <I think. laughs> How many times did you get your hair shaved? Well, as you can see, I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, mate, I, I I couldn't even tell you like a lot, of, like too many. Because you had a good too thing. many even uh, even even Howard Marks had me at the end. Do you know what I mean? Like I, like I thought me and Howard were good dates, but uh, yeah, there was yeah in Mac and stuff, and the eyebrows went. Yeah, because when like the kids were getting born, I was like, boys, I don't want photos of me without eyebrows. You know, mm -hmm. it was like one of those. But, yeah, uh, how was that? Like obviously, you are doing it for like cameras and stuff as well. But there must have been times you're thinking, fuck me, this is. This is, does it ever become hard work as well, or do you just go, do you know what, we're making a show and we're, we're becoming successful? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what, uh, probably a combination of both, if it's certainly the truth. You know, because, you know, people think tour bus life, you know, is great and whatnot. But you try living, sleeping, eating, you know, you, you're only getting like, you know, two showers a week, you know, unless you go to some dodgy service station in fucking Germany or whatever. Yeah, with somebody looking through the wall ha having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of service station oh, that is. Oh, well, you be, you, you be to them. Like, <laughs> it's only service oh, stations oh, I, I go to. I, I, I like gl glory old James. Yeah, yeah, no. Why do you think I'm on the road so much? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, but um, yeah, and like tour, tour life, it wasn't like after a while, it really took its toll, like, you know, on all of us. And as much as I love the guys, you know, and, you know, like, very, you know, sincere friends, you know, after a while, you know, it's just like being on a rugby or football tour, you know? It's, you know, like, a, you need that time, you know, to... To recharge. Yeah, to recharge. And, yeah. How long were you on the road for? Oh, we, like... <laughs> Yeah, um, like two months. At a time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No break. Mm -hmm. and people might think that's not long, but 
I'm on the road for three, four days sometimes a week and I'm fucked when I get home. I'm drained. Mm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it might not sound like a long period of time, but when you're trying to sleep with one eye open yeah. and you don't know when to chill and it's just like, yeah, you're just eating like shitty baguettes and stuff all around Europe. Like, look, this might sound as if I'm complaining because I'm not complaining about a single inch of it, right? I have no regrets in life. You know, it was rock and roll, it was timeless, and that's what made us who we are. And, like, we respected it, you know. What was it? Who who took the line? Was it Pritchard? What did he take a line of? Vinegar or something? Or what was it he took a, he took a line of something? Oh, we had, yeah, like, a metre of mustard powder. Mustard powder, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we've thought it was wasabi. We, like, we tried what was that like? Wasabi? Yeah. Well, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> I huh? need to try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that burn oh, the you nose of you. Yeah, you burnt, uh, burnt your fucking. A meter of mustard, I think, was the biggest attempt. But then we used to do like punters challenges, but uh, yeah, it didn't uh, really work out. Did you have a team behind you to say, look, you can't do that because you can die, or was it just a case of, fuck it, let's go? Do you know what? There were Glaswegian ones who came down, yeah. right? And we called him Begby. And. He was more nuts than us, right? We used to just sign everything, like high risk, high risk, and post it under his door, yeah? But then, yeah, we had other health and safety people and, like, you know, good people, yeah? Like, you know, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to jeopardise any professionalism. But, um, yeah, the Mancunian, you know, he, he was great, you know, like... We rocked with him, we party with him, we're still friends to this day. But like everything, high risk, high risk, you know, it was yeah. Yeah, everything dodgy then, but <laughs> Well, you you got you gotta you, know, you gotta tick those boxes. What's the one that? thing you would have loved to have done when Dr. Sanchez was at his prime? Did you ever have any pranks that you'd have you kinda just missed out on or Do you know what? To take Pritch's hair right off <laughs> like like to the bone. <laughs> No, um, yeah, look, uh, like, looking around now, there's so much gnarly stuff going on now. I don't know if you've seen, like, that person dropping in on, like, a bridge and then just base jumping off it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not very good with heights, but, like... Ah, never mind. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> no, I know. Tell me about it. Give me a line of fucking baking soda or whatever any day, mate. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Anything to do with heights, mate. That's no, I'm I'm rubbish. That's why I stand a five yeah. foot four and a quarter. <laughs> what do you think about the stuff that's happening now to when you were doing it back in the day where it was a kind of free for all? Like, half the stuff you've done now wouldn't be allowed now. But what do you think of the, the stuff that everybody's kind of doing? Everybody because social media is popping. Anybody can be social media is popping and you know, like I you know, respect to people as long as they're promoting something good. But I like also I think there's a lot of negativity that comes with it, you yeah. know? You know, like with, you know, nothing against, you know, these Love Islanders and stuff. But like if, if you're promoting like fucking Botox and fake, you know, like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't really, yeah, I just don't care a lot. Yeah. Know? It's all like inflows and stuff. But a lot of people, when somebody does something bad, they get shared and retweeted fucking thousands of times. Like people think the world's a bad place. But if somebody does something good, it doesn't get shared that much because everybody loves drama. Mm, so people yeah. just sell this. this share the shit and that's the difficult thing but when you were going through all that then did you ever get any grief from when you were at the height of everything you, like trolling and that wasn't around then because social media wasn't around but did you ever get people I, I like you know going back to what I said earlier you know now and again you meet the odd tosser in the mm -hmm. pub who was like look I'm harder than you type thing I'm like look mate look just chill out and there. He's fucking smashing the glass over his head, putting it to my fucking neck. And I'm like, you do that, and you're gonna have a fucking, you, you know, you're gonna fucking see the other side. You know? It's mad, but I'm not. Yeah. When, when but then you know the bit, like, you know, touch wood, and you know, thankfully, that was like, you know, few and far between. You know, everything was like pretty well embraced. You know, people like we got well embraced. You know. Yeah, people like say like on a whole. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I think you know, I as opposed to like you know the Yanks and stuff, it was like far more like relatable, and a lot of people, you know, they they seem to enjoy it. How was the live audiences? 
do you know what? It was one of the best buzzes of my entire life. Yeah? Yeah. 10,000 people have read in, 10,000 people have leads. Yeah. Nothing, you know, like, for like uh, you know, just a normal chap. And then, you know, you get them paid to do fucked up shit, which we were doing anyway. It was pretty like something else who was special. Did you ever feel pressure? Try to constantly raise the bar to get laughs and get the wow factor, the shock factor? They, they were like, there was always an element to like raising the bar and stuff, but I, d I don't think we'd really had a problem with that, you know, especially when you've got Pritch and Joyce on board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you sad when it kind of came to an end? Yeah, like to be honest, yeah. Yeah, the way things, like myself and Pritch went into Channel 4. Yeah, we did like, uh, you know, some pilots and stuff. And yeah, but you know what? All good things have to come to an end at some point. And then, you know, it's time to move on then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So what happened? What did you do with your life then once it was kind of, the curtains were kind of coming down a bit on the do all you, that stuff? Yeah, do you know what? Like, like at one point, I was in between checks and I had to be... You know, for like for the you know for everything and stuff, and I went went to the steelworks for a fortnight. You know, it's you know like nothing's, you know, and you know I'm a working class lad, but then you know now we started up like San Pablo, that's been going really well, and yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, because obviously people think they see you on the TV and they see uh, MTV, they think you're making millions, but it doesn't work that way. Like, yeah, well, like Harvey Weinstein, he's got a lot to live up to. Yeah, he owes you four million. What's that story again? Yeah, well, basically, like he bought the rights for for out in the states, and uh, yeah, I don't think we'll ever see that. Yeah, fucking bacon. But, never, you'll never see that for that fucking. Yeah, I guess it. that's just fucking nature, isn't it? But just, there's no way you can fight a case against that. I don't know. We like, we'll have to see. It's, it's something that, you know, we'll have to explore. You know, it's, it's you know, it's obviously going to be explored. But, um, yeah. You know, it's the old principles. It's like, we'll just, we'll just see what happens there. Yeah, fingers crossed, man, because it's still your baby. You still deserve to get something if you can. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, was there a lot of corruption and backstabbing when it came to all that kind of stuff? Money and contracts and all that bullshit? No. Especially if you're naive to it. Oh, like initially, yeah, yeah, without having an agent and stuff, yeah. You know, it's just like, well, Matthew, you know, but then, you know, the second series and stuff, yeah. You know, we made things right. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah exactly. it hasn't all been like doom and gloom, you know, like there. Yeah. It's great, but when you're young, you think it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. But Were you spending a lot back then? I was spending uh, quite a lot. I yeah. prefer just live, live for the day kind of mentality. Well, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. It was just live, yeah, yeah live and let live. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got older and have kids and we think, fuck me, give me that money back. Uh, uh, do you know what? Uh, yeah, but the kids, the kids are all right, so... That's the main thing. Yeah. So we just done out of jobs. Then what was it like from being on MTV to then going into kind of a normal job? Yeah, that, that, but that only lasted for like you know two, two weeks. weeks. What, what? So what were you? How were you getting treated though? Pardon? How were you getting treated when you were in there? Was people just not yeah, always want yeah, to ask yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was. It was just like you know, it was just like a proper interview. It was like fucking nonstop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, like certain people were stoked, other people looked down on you. Yeah, but but you know what? You know, like yeah, you gotta dust yourself off, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes you have to be down there to experience being up there. Yeah, of course, man. You know, and uh, like nobody's big in the village. You know, like for myself, you know, I I rock with all sorts of people. You know, I don't care if you're famous or not. It's about you know, it's about you know how people treat you and how you want to be treated. Yeah, exactly. You know? Life's a journey. Like, I, I'm the same. Treat people the way they treat you. Like, everybody yeah. breathes the same air. Like, there's no, it doesn't matter what we've got in the bank or who we are. Like, it's just all a persona and a, it's just a shield at the end of the day. Like, we're all fucking equal in my eyes. Like, no, exactly. Obviously, I'm doing well now. I can start looking down on people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not too, I'm, not, I'm not doing too bad. Do you? But like, do you like, know what, what is this then? So let's promote this straight away. This is a brand... Um, yeah, clothing brand yeah a clothing brand called Samba Tablo like uh -huh. myself and uh, Nigel Hunt yeah 
yeah, yeah, business partner. It's been going for like, yeah, it's been going for like five years strong. Good man, the shop's doing well, some classy stuff, very colourful. Is this for that skateboard dust kind of mentality? Or it's, that... it's basically, you know, it's it's one of the best streetwear shops in, in South Wales at the moment. And where can people get this shop? Where is it? Yeah, they can find it on mm-hmm. uh uh-huh. What do you think, looking back on that experience then, of the Madgers? The Madgers? Yeah. Uh, what do I think? Carnage. Yeah? Yeah, it just completed out the carnage. Is that 20 years or 25 years? It's t- uh, 20, 20 years, 20 years, man. Are you going to yeah. get, like, a, an anniversary kind of thing? Hopefully. Yeah, we'll, like, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Who knows? We all, we, like, we all got schedules. We all got stuff to do. Yeah. Know, but it's mega now. You know, you're talking social media. Everything's popping. and I don't see why not. I think everybody loved it. I think even when it, it never got another season, I think people were kind of shocked by it because the views were still fucking going through the roof yeah yeah but um you know like we went on and did like myself and Pritch did you know balls of steel you know some some other stuff (laughs) balls of steel was funny balls of steel was probably one of the most painful things that i've ever been through (laughs) yeah it was fucking gnarly man going through a brick wall like fucking whoa Mm -hmm. yeah like looking back, I was just think, what was I doing? <laughs> what was I actually doing? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty gnarly, man. Yeah, yeah. Would you have done anything though? Would you have been willing to do anything to no, create content? No, 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 no. Uh, like I, I draw the line on certain things. On what? Well, on what? Glory holding. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, for me. Just, 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 uh, 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 bring in the fifth people. <laughs> just bring in the fifth people. But um, no, it was it was so bizarre, man. Because I was I was going I was in a really rough like uh, turbulent relationship at the time, and um, yeah, doing a lot of narcotics and stuff for the first. The first series, and I'm like, how on earth I got to invite you back to the second one, and then we did the third, and then we did like massive balls of steel. Yeah, it was just, yeah, yeah. Channel Four, yeah, they definitely put us all pieces. So I'll give you that. Yeah, oh. They don't care, man. They're a free for all as well. Does um, does that come a lot of pressure and stress, like getting views and figures and trying to do well, like? Is that where the alcohol abuse and drug abuse comes in? I think they were like, no, no, no. It was just, it was just part and parcel of life, you know. Like at that moment in time, you know, like few figures, you know, we just leave that, you know, to, you know, if we were invited to, you know, to come back and do another show, that, that was just the way it was, you know. Yeah. We like at that moment in time, I wasn't really conscious about that, you know. Knowing what I know now it'd be completely different, you know, just like with anything, you know. I think that's what makes it work, though, when you don't care. Yeah. When you are oblivious to it, that which when you start worrying about it, you kind of put more pressure on yourself, and that's when the mistakes kick into play. Yeah, well, I'm not, uh, you know, like, I'm not worried about anything now. You know? It's like, just happy living, like, a good life, Samba Tablo, which is a great place, you know, like, you know, we we got the mountains there, we got the beaches there, you know, perfect reservoirs. Like, you like uh, cold water yeah. swimming, don't you? Mm-hmm. There's a beautiful place up there. You must come one time. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah. I definitely will. Yeah. I love all that shit. That's what keeps me sane. Even though people think you're insane, it's, I feel as if I'm sane. I'm probably, listen, I'm Aaron, I, I'm fucking insane. I'm you're talking, fucking Scottish, yeah. <laughs> of course you're going to be insane. You know what I mean? It's uh was you were you battling hard when you were going through the narcotic stage and that was that a long period of time for you? Did Pritchard ever say, "Look, you're fucking get your shit together"? Oh, Pritch did, yeah, yeah. Like at one moment in time, but it was, it was more to do with a, like a very, you know, volatile relationship I was going through at, at that moment in time. Did that affect you? No, well, it affected it affected our business. And that's, yeah, that's the only time me and Matthew have really, like, come to log ads. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a brand, doesn't it? Like, yeah, it was, yeah, well, it was, yeah. Yeah, it's something, you know, it's a lesson learned and stuff, you know? Yeah. You well, know, like, you know, these days, you know, it would, 
you know, it would never happen. But like at that moment in time, when you're young and you think things are going to last forever, you know, then yeah. Yeah, it was. But luckily enough, you know, things things are all good, yeah. Good, I'm glad to hear. What about when your dad passed out? We what was life like then? Did you struggle with that? Yeah, well, yeah. So um, yeah, both like both my father folks, like I lost them both. Like, Sorry if you yeah. lost brother. No, 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 no. To rejoice in life because you know, like the time we had together was precious, and um, yeah, it did hit me like a ton of bricks, and I probably did spiral out the control for. A year or two, I be third, this, that, the other, and uh, yeah, just being a fool. And then you realize, go on, get your shit together. I'm still working on my stuff, you know, it's like it's, it's every day, but you know, yeah, you write your your own eulogy, didn't you? yeah, exactly. Like, well, fucking make mistakes. Look, my old, I will speak about this shit, but my dad passed, I spiraled for seven years. Mm. All I'd done was take fucking drinking drugs. I didn't know how to handle the pain. And was, even when I had um, Joe Kosagi on there, again, he was broken when his dad died. Yeah. He hit the drink and the party and because we just don't know how to handle death. Like. Oh, man, you know, like, I'm sorry for your loss too, James. Thank and you, man. And, like, you know, like, Joe's senior, you know, like, oh, man. It's, it's hard to put into words, you know, yeah. you know because... You know, it's it's an escape mechanism, but it's, you know, like, I remember my old man saying to me, you know, look, you'll never find the problem, you know, you never resolve a problem at the bottom of a glass. And what was I doing? Just, yeah. Yeah, bottoms up kind of thing. But it does take your pain for a very small percentage of the day away, but it just enhances it the next day as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the plus side, I, I've got a very good circle of friends and tight family. And, yeah, I'll, I'll like a drink from now and again. Like the whole, like the narcotic side is gone. You know, but it's, you know, it's good to, to have like a smaller bubble, you know, and, you know, people you can really trust. Yeah. Yeah, to move on and... um you know, like the scars will always be there, and you know, legends never die either. No, did the fuck. That's, yeah. As you say, the scars are always there, but you just got to learn how to deal with them too. No, absolutely. Move and, forward with them. And you know, to be honest, you know, like that's the beauty of living in Patol, but you know, is you can go mountain biking or just go for a cycle around the beach now. You know, it's, yeah, you know, it's beautiful. Get a good vibe, nature. Yeah, that's what it's all about. But your mum and dad would have seen you. You protect living your best life at a young age, just having fun and being successful and doing what you're doing. Like having a son that's on MTV and doing just having fun. I grew up a large, yes, it was fucking nuts, but still, man, they'd be proud of Oh, they're like, do you know what? Like, they they, they were definitely proud. Like, you know, like, my old man, he wouldn't admit it, but like, you know, my old man, like, he was like a double bass player, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he stood as high as I did, you know what I mean? Like, he was one of those man's man. Like off the head gaskets got in the car. Like I'll sort that out. You know. Yeah. You know, proper legend, man. Mm. Like I'm, I'm, like I'm sure your dad. You know, yeah. It's just, you know, like I was blessed, man. And I don't want to sound, you know, like, but like, you know, it, it was great to have him here. Like for when we did, you know, for for the time mm. we shared together, and it's priceless. And if I could be half the parent, that they would to me. To my daughters, I'd be a very happy man. Yeah, I'm sure you are, my brother, and more, but it's just all about living and learning and accepting the pain to move on. And listen, man, well, life life is a journey. It's a fucking mad journey at that. It's, it's, it's not easy, man. Like, no matter how well you succeed or what you're doing, like, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm a constant thinker. So I'm thinking, what the f fuck is it all about? Same like, year, man. What is it all about? Oh, same year, but same year. Do you know what I mean? Every day I learn something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, the world keeps turning, you know, it keeps evolving, you know, adapt, overcome. You know, it's it's not about, like, you know, oh, like, you know, I've got, like, I've got this, I've got that, you know, like, materialistic stuff doesn't drive me, personally. Yeah. It's about finding your inner strength. Yeah. 
Yeah, we've all got that as well. That's a scary thing for anybody maybe watching or battling. Big security guard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't worry, you're in downtown PT. <laughs> downtown PT, Sampa Tablo. Big mo, big mo cop there. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Uh, where do you go from here then, brother? From the well, MTV star to having your own clothing range to what's the plans for the future? Uh, like the plans for the future are to be a better person than myself, like learn and, yeah, try and stay in the straight and narrow. But more importantly, to be uh, like the best father I can and, you know, make make the shop, uh, ex- you know, proper, you know, take it global. You know, San Pablo, you got San Francisco, you know, let's, why not? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Make it a success and just go with it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Where do you get that method of thinking to take it global and believing that you're going to take it global? Well, because, you like, if you, if you haven't got hope, well, like, what have you got? You know, like, you've got to, you got, like, you've got to go for stuff 100%, haven't you? If you're not going to go for it 100%, what's the point in going for it? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, mate. You've just got to take your shot. Roll the dice. Roll the dice, pay the price. Exactly, like, uh, mate. That's what I used to do with the uh-huh. kids. Like, uh, like, I, I was that bad a dad. I could be just playing craps. Like, <laughs> right? you know, Daddy, yeah, roll the uh-huh. dice. And they, uh-huh. they came up with the term, roll the dice, pay the price. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but it was great for like quick, quick like arithmetic mm-hmm. and stuff for the kids. Yeah. Where's the best place you've ever been in the world? Where's the best place? Oh, obviously, fucking... Scotland <laughs> well, Fucking downtown San Pablo I have actually been up Ben Nevis And it was glorious Did you climb it? Yeah man Beautiful huh? No, it was great man mm-hmm. Yeah it was great Yeah it was about four years ago Yeah Yeah It's, yeah, it's a good climb Easy. It's not as hard as people think It's the tallest in the UK It is the tallest yeah. in the UK I believe Yeah But um, Yeah it, it was for a charity that, uh, It was very close to my heart And um, Yeah yeah, it was. Do you know what it, it was? It, going up, right? It's completely different to coming down. Down's harder. Down is harder. Yeah. And you know what they actually had? It was it was August time, and they had like an annual like, do you like it was like the, yeah. you get up the fastest and stuff? And it was people coming down. I felt like a fucking like a bowling ball in the fucking alley. <laughs> like all right, but then it was people like all right. Desiccated legs and shit like uh-huh. that, and like fucking like necks, like proper embraces. It was proper gnarly, man. Yeah, proper gnarly. And I was just like, ah, oh, whoa, this does make Sanchez look like a pile of shit, man. Because mm-hmm. they were going for gold, like, yeah. Funny, but that, that's I, that's what I find my peace and nature. Yeah, no, like, I like definitely, man. That's when I feel alive, like just out in nature, feeling good. Out in the wilderness, no fucking buddy there, nobody to talk to. If I see somebody in a supermarket that I know, I'll go down another aisle so I can't speak to them. I, I did that <laughs> actually today. <laughs> I, for once, it wasn't an ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like peace and tranquility and happiness. I don't want to sound all hippie and stuff, but that is that's the way forward, I reckon. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about it. I think when you go through a bit of trauma and pain, when you start losing people, you start understanding life a bit more. You start appreciating a bit more, even though we can still fuck up and do bad stuff. And mm-hmm. my eating's bad, but we can still destroy our health and certain things. But we know we're right from wrong. We know what we're doing is wrong, yeah. but it's just hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's, a fun, it's all about finding the life, life balance. balance. Yeah. Like for me, yeah, I have a couple of drinks, you know, now and again, but. You know, like trying to eat healthy and, you know, just, just to get out and get energised, get out into the countryside, get out into the wilderness, you know? Yeah, and recharging. Yeah, and just yeah. recharging. Like you said, you know, is, there's nothing wrong with a bit of, you know, secludedness, you know, just go away like like Raoul Mort. Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> take everybody out with you. No, that was really fucking wrong. <laughs> I, I do apologise to the family there. But, uh, yeah. Um, no, no, but like peace and tranquility and mm. stuff, you know, is yeah. is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Before we finish up, my brother, would you like to finish up on anything yourself? I'd just like to say thanks for having us, James. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, and if anyone's watching, yeah, com. Check the link before. 
We will leave the link in the description box and stuff anyway for people to get in contact. This spons- this episode is sponsored by this brand anyway. Happy you know days. I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right. Welcome to the Salmon Tambler, yeah, brother. Thank you. Listen, God bless you and thanks God for coming on. God bless you too. All the best for the future. Cheers. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.